Hello YouTube, it's Raphael here from XX Raphael Productions and welcome to the Black Sabbath Master of Reality album review. This is personally my second favorite Sabbath album with Paranoid just having an edge over it due to my favorite Sabbath songs like Iron Man or Fairy Swear Boots being present on that album. However, I will admit that when it comes to the actual sound or vibe as you listen to this album, it is evidently much heavier than the previous two albums. And as far as I know, Paranoid's guitar tuning is actually standard, but this album, Master of Reality, is about either a half step down or a step down, which gives it that heavier sound as well. But nonetheless, some members of Black Sabbath, like Tony Iommi, admitted that Master of Reality was supposed to be a lot heavier than the previous two albums as well. Which, to be fair, is very evident as you listen and get engaged into this wild ride. The album is actually much, much shorter than Paranoid. However, despite being much shorter in length, they actually have the same amount of tracks, because that is around 8 songs, starting from Sweet Leaf and ending with the album closer into the void. Some backstory before we begin our review. So, Tony Iommi had his accident with his middle and ring fingers back when he was 17 years old. But this is the first album where he actually started using different tunings, mostly around half step down or even lesser than that. The first two albums were actually all in standard tuning as far as I know, and he had developed a technique for fretting power chords using an index and pinky fingers after his accident. He expanded upon his playing style first on this album by downtuning the top string to D and C sharp, etc., so that he could play more, uh, you know, complex chord uh, patterns, which allowed him for the playing of basic power chords with one finger. This, luckily, has been widely emulated by many guitarists in the future, which means that he, despite his accident, he was still able to actually become a very influential guitar player, which is uh, quite an achievement. So, now that we have gotten the, some of the backstory out of the way, we're going to go ahead and actually review and talk about the album itself. And now, when it comes to album openers, Sweet Leaf, the first track, is definitely one of the best they have done. Now, I'm going to do a comparison to Paranoid's opening, and that is War Pigs. Because similarly to how I felt about War Pigs being the opener of Paranoid, the um, memorable and intense riff of Sweet Leaf's already gives an insight into how the rest of this album is going to feel, and boy did it not disappoint. Because I will tell you, the riff is one of those riffs that are instantly recognizable after you hear it once or twice, and it just gets you like hyped every single time. So, speaking of Ozzy Osbourne, the lead singer of Sabbath at the time, speaking of Ozzy Osbourne's vocals, I kind of classify his voice as a love it or hate it, hate it type, and what I mean by love it or hate it is that prior to making this album review, there were tons of people I had spoken to just to kind of gather a general a general opinion of what they think of Ozzy Osbourne's voice, and they have had all drastically different opinions. So I am not talking about the actual songs themselves. So when I'm talking about Ozzy Osbourne, I am simply referring to his vocals, the way it sounds. So get like the songs out of your head for now. So isolating Ozzy Osbourne for this particular part. Tons of people I've spoken to um, say that some people love it, some of them find it irritating. Uh, I've managed to conduct this from when I asked around my school, my parents, and a bunch of other family friends as well. Um, I also had something similar like this when I was talking about Axl Rose and Guns N' Roses, which their, their type of voices are, are those that kind of appeal to certain demographics. So you can't, I know you can't please everyone, but these type of um, sounds, I guess, appeal to certain type of people, and you may find it um, a, as a plus for Sabbath songs, or you might find it as a detriment, which in my opinion, I think it's a plus, because the kind of sound that Sabbath is going for, Ozzy Osbourne definitely nailed it, in my personal opinion. But now we're going to go ahead and talk about the album cover itself, which, to be fair, is not really mu not much to write home about. Simply put, it's simply the band name along with the name of the album. But despite it being incredibly simple, this is one of those album covers that sticks with you despite its simplicity. 
and whether that is due to the amazing listening experience you get while listening to the album, which is definitely a factor. But to me personally, there is something about the way this album cover is designed that is just perfect the way it is. So I know that it's quite simple and hell, some people might even say it's a bland album cover, but in my personal opinion, decorating it way too much would probably kill what makes it great. And this is an example of sometimes less is more, which is definitely how I feel about the cover of Master of Rea Reality. I'm sorry. That is how I feel about the cover of Master of Reality. Okay? So that is the album cover of this. And let's get it out of the way now. And we're going to talk about the tr tracks themselves. And um, I know we already talked about Sweet Lift earlier when it comes to the opening riff and everything and all these vocals shining through. Let's go straight into After Forever, which is track number two. There are some moments, okay, I don't know how many of you watching this video are fans of the Friends TV show, but if you know that show and then you listen to After Forever, you will definitely know which part of this song I am referring to when I say that it is very similar to the intro of Friends. But getting that out of the way, once again, another catchy and memorable riff, along with what appears to be trying to show to the listeners that they were not a satanic band. Because, like, let's look at After Forever's lyrics. I mean, I will show it right now on the screen, and you can read it along with me. But let's go ahead and um, say what I could gather. So I actually looked this up before I made this review about why After Forever's lyrics were kind of on the nose, but turns out Sabbath were dubbed satanic against their will. Like, sure, their music was dark, and the lyrics are generally dark or depressing, but there was no real overt satanism in their work. So, basically, After Forever's lyrics are a protest against that label, which they did not want in the first place. So, that definitely gave some context into why the lyrics of these were so different from the rest. But then again, After Forever, another good track. Definitely listen to it, and it's also... It flows well after Sweet Lift because um, their riffs are entirely different, but still, I think that um, it's a great experience listening to it in that particular order. Like, the way they order their tracks in this album is good. The way everything flows, which I'll get into that later. But tracks like Embryo, Orchid, and Solitude work extremely well as well. And while others may say that it is out of place in this heavy album, because let's be real, we have Into the Void, uh, Lord of This World and After Forever being extremely heavy and Children of the Grave But then we had some tracks like these. I actually like that now I said earlier that I would get into the um, overall sound of the album so The way I would describe that is that I honestly like the whole calm before the storm It's that kind of trope that is present throughout this album like it is very easy like is that we had very long songs like Solitude for example well, not very long, but I mean, like, if you compare that, it's some people might classify that as a filler song, but I think that it served well as a calm before the storm type, because if you go ahead and, like, think about it, they actually could have fallen into a trap of making it drag on and on and making it boring, but in this album, however, not one moment of this album was boring. Every part of it was perfect, to be honest. I mean, I know I said this album is shorter than Paranoid, but... I think the length is perfect the way it is. Now, some may disagree with me on that, but as I said before, everything, in my opinion, flows perfectly. So, basically, it serves as a cool balance from the heavy tracks to the more somber tracks, if you will. And um, back to the topic of Ozzy Osbourne, we're going to go ahead and now talk about Children of the Grave and Lord of This World, because, wow, Ozzy Osbourne is just like... He's just bleeding emotions as he sings these songs, which is wow. Because, like, as a listener, it really had an effect as I listened to the way he sings them. Now, once again, this will apply to the people who are a fan of his type of singing. Because, as I said earlier, his voice will appeal to a certain type of demographic. Not necessarily everybody, as he definitely has a unique kind of tone and sound to his vocals. But, for me, it really, really worked. And, um... Now, I will ad I'll admit, despite loving the type of style of his singing, there are some parts that do sound a bit off, but hear me out, that actually, for me, it adds to the actual appeal, because I know it is not one of those bands that sound terrible in a bad way, but 
in this album, the actual sort of mistakes, I can, I actually want to look for a better word than mistake, but I guess just a little like unconventional type of singing in some parts, it actually adds to the overall appeal for this album. So basically, it's it was good on Black Sabbath. I can congratulate them for not falling into the trap that many other bands fall into. And I, I'm not going to list them all down because I will get into that in another video. So we've already covered the majority of songs, but there is one last song we still have not covered, and that is the actual album Closer. So going into the album Closer, let's go ahead and go to the last song, which is called Into the Void. Now, I am excited to get to this part because for me, I personally feel that this is the epitome of what Master of Reality Sound was supposed to be. This song is absolutely amazing. It absolutely kicks ass with a heavy riff that feels like it was trying to convey like this. This is the sound that we were aiming for and we are going full speed ahead on this one. And wow, they delivered well. So far, definitely one of Sabbath's most epic album closers, especially when you realize that um, the album from start to finish has already been kick ass. Like it was basically all killer, no filler. So that was basically one of the best parts of this album. And all his vocals are pretty much the same, not much to write home about. They're the same as if you have already listened to the rest of the album. But what makes this song extra heavy is the guitars, bass, and drums. I mean, Tony was definitely hitting heavy on that riff, the intro and the middle, like, wow. I definitely recommend headphones for that, preferably with bass boosted, because wow, you will, you will, you're in for a fun time. So, to summarize now, Master of Reality was released in 1971. Well, if you want to be more specific, July 21, 1971. And Master of Reality peaked at number 5 on the UK Albums chart and number 8 in the United States. So in conclusion, Master of Reality is definitely one of Sabbath's most iconic and important albums, not only to them as a band, but even to the metal genre as a whole as they paved the way for many future metal bands. Definitely my second favorite Black Sabbath album. In my opinion, the best album for me is still Paranoid because of Iron Man and Fairies Wear Boots and Electric Funeral and definitely War Pigs as well, but Master of Reality is a definitely a very, very close runner-up. A definitely worthy sequel to Paranoid. I recommend this album definitely if you are a metal fan and now, to get to my final rating for this album, I will give it a 9.5 out of 10. So thank you very much for watching. If you agree or disagree with my review, feel free to comment down below or you can add me on Skype as well if you want to recommend other videos for me to make in the future. Skype name is on the screen right now. It's also in the beginning as well. Thank you for listening to my review and it is Raphael signing out.